um, the covenant with Abraham um, really was uh, was about offspring, a multitude of offspring, and the land. Interestingly enough, the second covenant is enacted before they get the land. And in fact, um, the astonishing thing about the foundation of the Israelite nation is they have a law and a spiritual direction before they have an economy and before they have land. And it is um, astonishing. I mean, it really is astonishing. It's, it's absolutely unheard of before and since. I mean, the first covenant, in a way, is tied to the family principle. It's a kind of pre-political pre-political principle of, 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 of seed and offspring and multiplicity. What's given to Abraham is not a people-making event. The people-making event is the law um, by which the multitude, now liberated, now appreciating that they are no longer slaves and are in relation to their liberator, now undertake voluntarily to uh, abide by and to live with amongst themselves. It was really, really, really hard to get a foothold for God's way in the world in the families because the families are nests of Tsaurus. Um, and um, you go through two generations where one son is, one son is, is, survives as the carrier of the way handed down by his father, first Yitzchak, uh, then Yaakov. And then thanks to the rivalry of the wives, you finally get to the beginning of what will become a critical mass to move from the family, from the family of per perpetuation of a tradition to a collective embodiment and perpetuation of the tradition. Um, and um, the second covenant is, I would say, um, humanly speaking, more important than the first. God choosing to produce this people by emptying them out of everything in Egypt so they come out with no traditions, with nothing. Um, rather than taking an existing polity and reforming it, he starts with them from scratch. Um, and they are given a chance. You want to become a, a treasure unto me and a kingdom of priests and a goy kadosh, a holy nation? Here's the deal. And uh, without knowing what they're getting themselves into, of course, they say yes. I mean, this is this really is a tr the transformational event. Um, all honor to all honor to Avraham mm -hmm. for having not turned down the invitation to take a walk when ordered, when invited to take a walk, and for passing all of his tests, seriatim. Um, but. Um, it's very striking that the children of Israel are, when the new covenant is offered to them, um, the patriarchs aren't mentioned. It's a new foundation based upon the deliverance from Egypt and the voluntary covenant that they're all entering into. Moses knows that these are that this is the God of, of, of his ancestors, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, but the children of Israel are not told. But the offer is an offer based upon you saw yourself how I brought you to me on eagle, eagle's wings. Um, and it is based upon um, the deliverance from Egypt, the witnessing at the, at the Sea of Reeds, the song that Moses teaches them to sing about the meaning of what they've seen. About the meaning of what they've seen. Um, and the the manna and the astonishing victory over the Amalekites in a chapter in which God isn't mentioned once. I mean, this motley crowd of ex-slaves manages to acquit themselves under lethal attack. So um, it's their own experience and this new covenant rather than the ancient uh, pre-Egyptian experience of Genesis about which I want to say they know nothing.